claiming that the XFL got no money from their deal with ESPN. Clearly, they have no idea what they're talking about because no one really knows. However, somebody might know. Daniel Kaplan and Bill Shea of The Athletic recently published a lengthy article about if the XFL and USFL should coexist, can coexist or need to merge. They talk about both leagues, where they came from, how they are now. The article includes quotes from people in the sports business world. They discuss if there is an appetite for year-round football and if leagues will merge at some point. There were a couple of interesting tidbits about the XFL in that, something fans have been wondering for some time. Did they, XFL, get money from Disney this time, or did the league make a similar deal like they did back in 2020? Back in 2020? We learned from The Atlantic that the deal between the XFL and ABC, Disney, ESPN includes money. Quote, the new XFL has the weight of ESPN behind it. When the league announced its eight home markets, ESPN sent out a push notification. The parties won't comment on their economics of the deal, but a source said there is a rights fee. Goes on to say, quote, there is substantial income from day one, the source texted of the ESPN contract, who then compared the league's strategy to the 2020 startup version. But every aspect of the overall plan is better from the way they will leverage their new owners, which include Dwayne The Rock Johnson, to the way they see the game being played, to the TV deals, to the marketplaces they choose, to the way they're housing players, to fan engagement plans. So this person from ESPN said that the, the, it's a substantial income that, the, that they're getting from this uh, deal. Mike Mitchell is going to have more of that stuff later on uh, in the week, so stay tuned to XFL News Hub for that. But... Every aspect of the overall plan is better than it was in the original version. That's something to keep in mind. That's kind of interesting. They also mentioned the ad money coming in from the XFL. Will there be enough money for both the XFL and USFL and XFL to coexist in 2023? I remember, they're both coming in. But where is this ad money coming from? So, quote, this year, USFL games generated around $65 million in TV advertising revenue for Fox and NBC, according to EDO, a New York-based advertising metrics data firm that tracks commercial engagement. In 2020, ads during XFL games ginned up $50 million during the truncated season, but were more effective than USFL in-game ads, the firm said. Interesting. EDO data shows that TV viewers were 30% more engaged with ads during the shortened XFL season in 2020 than the USFL season in 2022. The question with those numbers is that that was 2022. Things are a lot different now after you know what. People's television habits are different now. You get my drift. Can the XFL 3.0 era bring the same interest or better? Something we're going to have to find out. Now, the next question is whether advertisers will spend on the XFL and USFL, basically at the same time. The USFL already sold 50% ads uh, sold for its 2023 season. Quote, while brands will certainly manage their overall ad frequency during XFL and USFL games, there's no known downside to investing in both environments, uh, Grover said. Airing head-to-head -head ads will undoubtedly impact brands' performance, but going into the season, we expect XFL has an advantage given it has a proven to be stronger environment for advertising. Interesting. In the end, for both leagues, it comes down to who has the better business model, who is willing to lose money, and how much in the beginning. We'll find out when the XFL kicks off in February 2023 and the USFL later in April. So for anybody asking who didn't know what they were talking about, did the XFL get some money? Now, do we know what it is? No, I have a feeling Mike Mitchell might know, but we'll have to wait for that report. But it is definitely more than what they got in the XFL 2.0 era, and that is a good sign.